Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about RT events. Since we have many RT events, I am planning to take as a part by part. In this part, I am going to cover four RT events. First, we have to understand about what is RT event. As you all know that when you want to transfer the data between two software components, first importantly you need a ports. For an example, one software component will have a P port. Another software component will have a R port and you can take, you can imagine now software component A has a P port and software component B has a R port. Then the particular port or the particular software component need an internal behavior. Events is part of internal behavior and you need a runnable entity. The runnable entity is like a C function. So runnable entity will be associated with the event and event will be mapped with the OS task. So this is the way the function call will happen. So, whenever the runnable entity has to trigger, that will be decided by the RT event. And we have a multiple RT event. If you will see this picture, we, this event is part of internal behavior. And inside this event, you can have a multiple event. Now, we can understand about what all of the events are there. For an example, here I have mentioned the type of events. And here I have mentioned the workflow. For an example, the data received event always will be associated with the sender receiver communication. And the data received error event also will be associated with the sender receiver communication. The timing event is a periodic activation of runnable. For an example, you can have a 10 ms, 5 ms, or 20 ms, or 50 ms, 100 ms, 1000 ms, like that. And here I have clearly mentioned that the events will be part of what kind of communication. For an example, operation invoked event will be part of client server communication. So you can keep in your mind the data received event means then always the port has a sender receiver interface. That's what I have mentioned as a sender receiver communication. And if you want to understand more clear about sender receiver communication, and you can watch my complete AutoSAR playlist. This is another picture to say about to clearly indicate that what kind of communication type will be chosen, what kind of event. And at the same time, the particular event, whether possible to have a wait point or not. But everything is based on your requirement. And here I have mentioned that whether the task mapping is needed or not. As I mentioned, the particular data received event should be mapped with the task. At the same time, the operation invoked event is not necessary to map with the task, but is again based on your RTE and based on your requirement. For an example, this is a direct call. This will be directly, the call will be directly made by RTE. That is the reason the uh, task to event mapping is not required. And here I have mentioned some of the RTE events which will be mentioned as a wait point or here whether the task mapping is needed or not everything i have mentioned it here so this picture will help you for you to understand more about rt events now we can start to discuss about what is timing event as i said timing event will be activated periodically for an example you can have a 20 ms 10 ms 5 ms 50 ms so timing event generally will be used if you want to periodically call a function meaning if you have mentioned the timing event and here the runnable entity will be associated with the timing event, then the particular runnable entity will be called based on the period whichever you have mentioned. But it's based on default, it's based on seconds. So for an example, you can say about 20 millisecond or if you will mention about 1 then 10 millisecond. So kind of the periodically trigger will happen. And at the same time, you can have a P port or R port side to receive a data or to send a data. So you can use a timing event or P port or an R port for an example to in server side or in sender side for an example server side or in client side you can use it wherever you want and runnable entities that are activated in response to a timing event are said to be time triggered because this is a timing event and this is an example how the timing event RT will generate the code when you have done a configuration for an example a timing event having a period of 20 millisecond and starting a runnable entity RE underscore A so here I have mentioned the runnable entity name called re underscore a. This is a simple name. With the same name, you have to write a function. That is also very important. But this name will be used to map or mention it inside the events. So here the runnable entity name is re underscore a is mapped to OS task 10 ms. But we have a timing trigger called 20 ms. So OS task period set to 0 0.01, meaning 10 millisecond. So for an example, how the RT will handle this situation? So RT generally we have a global variable that is mentioned as 0. And here we have a task of 10 millisecond. And it will check whether the particular label is equal to equal to 0 or not. 
If it is the case, then your particular runnable will get triggered. Then this will set us to and we will do the decrement. Meaning, for an example, every uh, 20 millisecond, for an example, since we have a 10 millisecond, every two times the particular runnable has to get to triggered. To avoid the situation, you can have a separate OS task for 20 millisecond and you can map it directly, then this problem will not come. It's just an example for when you have a 20 millisecond runnable entity, meaning you have a timing event of 20 millisecond, but you are mapping with the 10 millisecond how the RT will handle. That is the reason I have mentioned the example here. Background event. So, this event is used to trigger a runnable entity that are supposed to be executed in the background. Meaning, whenever you have a idle task, whenever the OS is idle, then the particular event should get triggered. So, most of the cases, when you, when you want to or when you think that it will take more time, for an example, you want to perform a write and you it will take, for an example, it's more than 1000 bytes or 2000 bytes. And if you feel this will take more time, then in that case, you can go for a background event. Or if you feel that, Okay, this is not important and at the same time, whenever the OS is an idle, that time the particular event should get triggered, that time also you can use background event. But that will activate a runnable within the idle task, meaning whenever the OS is idle, that time it, this will get triggered. And these events are similar to a timing events, but in that they are recurring, but unlike timing events have a no fixed period. That is the only difference between background event and timing event. And the RTE supports two mechanisms for activating a background events. One is invocation from an idle task. Second one is external OS alarm or schedule table. In these cases, the background event will get triggered. But everything is based on your requirement. According to that, you have to do the OS mapping as well. And this is an another example how you can create a, or how you can do the autos or configuration for background activation. For an example, here I have created the application software component. It's named as software component background. And I have internal behavior. I have a background event mapped with the runnable. And this runnable has like a direct symbol. So this is basically called as a background event. These all are the things are important. In this side, if you will see here, the RTE will generate a code based on your configuration. So, if you will see here, so the background call, whenever the background task is getting triggered. So, as I mentioned, it can be triggered based on these two activation mechanism. So, this is a way background event will get triggered. So, based on your requirement, you can decide whether you want to have a background task or not. And one more important thing you have here, you have to note it is the background event triggering has to have the lowest priority on the core basically whenever you are seeing the background task or if you want to understand whether the particular task is a background or particular event is a background or not by seeing the priority you can understand that whether the particular task or event is the background event or background task or not data received event this is one of the important event because most of the cases whenever you want to trigger a runnable whenever the data is available. So, whenever the P port or sender transmits the data, whenever the data is active. So, the data received event runnable will get activated whenever the data is received on the R port side. Meaning, whenever the sender send the data and data is available in the R port side, then particular event will get triggered. So, the difference between timing event in this case is, this is generally called as a sporadic. Meaning, Whenever the data is available, that time your runnable is getting triggered. So, that is the reason it is called as a event triggered. But timing event is generally called as a time triggered. So, the configuration of an RT event refers to a data element of sender receiver interface. That is what I have shown in the first slide. If you want to configure a data received event, then your port should have a sender receiver interface. And the RT event can be used to invoke a runnable entity or to unblock a wait point of a runnable entity. So, for this purpose, the RT API, RT underscore receive is provided by the RT generator. If you want to understand more detail about the sender receiver interface, you can watch my separate video. I have just mentioned in the description about sender receiver interface video. There I have clearly explained about it, how what kind of RT API will be generated and how you have to handle the sender receiver interface. And the wait point referencing a data received event is only permitted if the software implementation policy of the variable data prototype referenced by this data received event is set to queued. In that video, that means sender receiver video, I have clearly mentioned about software implementation policy and how you have to configure and how the wait points will be handled. And I am planning to take a separate video for wait point and you can watch my complete playlist to understand about the wake up of wait point as well. So basically you can keep in your mind data received event will be used whenever you want to trigger a runnable 
whenever the data is available on the receiver side. In that case, data received event will be used. You can see this configuration. I have created, I have configured as a software component called sample software component and I have a R port called RP underscore receiver. Here I have mentioned send receiver interface, internal behavior, data received event. This data received event mainly used to read the speed. Maybe you can consider as a vehicle speed or engine speed, whatever. Here I have taken as a sample. So here I have mentioned the R port and variable data prototype, it's called as a sample speed and which runnable has to trigger whenever the data is available on the R port side. So here I have mentioned the runnable entity. We have a data read access because whenever the runnable entity is getting triggered, what kind of API, we, what kind of data we want to read. Here I am interested to read about the speed. Then my symbol name is sample speed. In that case, I have to write a function also in the name of sample speed. If you will see it here, this is a function definition. So here I am doing the RT read to read the speed. So here I am basically mentioning about speed invalid and I am calling this function, I am passing as an argument. So this is the way you can configure the data received event. Next, data receive error event. The data receive error event will be used and at same equal to the data receive event. The handling will be the same, but the difference is whenever the whenever there is a, a failure or whenever there is a failed cases, then data receive error event will be triggered. Meaning, activate a runnable entity when either invalidated data is received or an alive timeout has failed. Mostly, the data received event will be used to read to deal with the com layer so exactly the data receiver event indicates that an error was detected by the com layer during data transmission for a non queued sender receiver interface for an example you are mapping with uh, your application port to the com layer then whenever there is a failure or allow timeout has failed then the particular event will get triggered to indicate that there is a failure so based on your requirement you can just configure your runnable entity then the particular data receiver error event can be raised for two reasons. One is signal outdated, another one is signal invalid. So signal outdated means incoming signal is not received in time as configured in the alive timeout attribute of the receiver com spec. Signal invalid means incoming signal is equal to the invalid value. And the implicit read, the error code can be obtained by calling RT underscore I status API. The explicit read returns the error code from the RT underscore read API. So you can keep in your mind data receive error event will be configured whenever there is a failure in the com layer. For an example, I am saying an example for com layer. So if the signal is outdated or signal is invalid, then to indicate that there is a failure in the communication, then you can use the data receive error event. For making a configuration of data receive error event, so here we have a I have mentioned the application software component name. Here I have a data receive error event. So the same like a data receive event. So same way here I have mentioned the R port. Here runnable entity and I have a VDP. So particular I have mentioned the runnable entity name. Here I have mentioned I have a function name called error sample speed. So the C code, the particular function will get called whenever there is an allow timeout failure or the communication meaning your com signal related signal is invalidated. Then in that case, the particular function will get triggered. So here then you have to do that, whatever the activity you want to do that. So I have mentioned in the comment, error or timeout receiving data element speed on port, the particular port name. Note that there is no option to retrieve the error code from the RT read call here in this runnable. So this is the way you have to design data receive error event. So thanks for watching this video. In this video, I have covered only four events rt events in the part 2 video i am going to cover the another four events so you can stay with us for to understand about the all completed rt events so thanks for watching this video if you like it please share it with your friends if you want to stay with us for more technical content then subscribe our channel thank you so much have a nice day